Welcome to Tigu King's YouTube channel. Today's topic is pipe coping and branch pipe welding. What is pipe coping? Well, it is called pipe saddle. As shown in the picture, I'm trying to attach a 2 inch pipe end to a 3 inch pipe top. As you can see, the pipe is round so it cannot be joined. The next picture shows pipe coping and it fits well. This is called pipe notching or pipe coping, which is joining the end of the pipe to another pipe. There are many tricks and tips, but I think the method I'm showing today is the most basic. Please try to understand, then you can do any pipe size. Now, let's start making a pipe coping template. We are going to attach 2 inch pipe to a 3 inch pipe top. Step 1. Transfer the picture you see now to a paper. Step 2. Divide the branch into 4, 8, 12, or 24 parts. The more you divide, the more accurate the template will be. Step 3. Imagine cutting the branch vertically and spreading it. It is called development. Step 4. Measure the true length of the divided branch and mark it on development. This completes the coping template. Let me explain each step. First, draw a 3 inch pipe on the paper. Draw a horizontal line before drawing the circle. The outside diameter of 3 inch pipe is 89 mm. Then, the radius is 49.5 mm. Set the compass to a 49.5 mm uh, and draw a circle. Next, draw a vertical line for the center line of the branch pipe. Set the compass longer than the radius of 3 inch pipe. Make an intersection point as you can see at both ends. Draw a line through this intersection point and it will be a perfect vertical line. Next, transfer the 2 inch pipe on the paper. The outside diameter of the 2 inch pipe is 60 mm. Therefore, the radius is 30 mm. The height is 95 mm. In the actual front view, it looks like a square, but it is a pipe. And we'll divide it into 12 equal parts. To do this, we need to draw a half circle with a radius of 30 mm. And we have to divide it into 6 parts. Here is how to divide the half circle into 6 equal parts. Set the compass to a radius of 30 mm and mark the arc at the intersection of from the both ends and the center. It will be divided into exactly 6 parts. Since we divided the half circle into 6 parts, it is the same as dividing the entire arc into 12 parts. In fact, this part was difficult for me to understand personally because I couldn't see the arc from the front view. That's why I actually divided 2 inch pipe into 12 parts for my easy understanding and took a look at it again and then I could understand. You don't need to divide the actual pipe, it is a totally waste of time. Next, you draw a vertical line from each intersection of the arc to the 3 inch pipe surface. Then, give a number to each intersection. It doesn't matter where you start numbering. I start at number 1 in the middle and go clockwise. It will be easier to understand if you look at the actual pipe numbering on the picture. Now let's draw the flat pattern of the 2 inch pipe. Imagine cutting the pipe vertically and spreading it. The arc length of the 2 inch pipe and the width of the flat pattern are the same. The OD of the 2 inch pipe is 60 mm. 
then the arc length is 60 mm multiply pi. The arc length is 188.5 mm. The width of the flat pattern is also 188.5 mm. I divided 5 into 12 equal parts. I also divide the flat pattern into 12 equal parts. If you divide 188.5 by 12, you get 15.7 mm. I use a caliper to divide the flat pattern into 12 equal parts to increase accuracy. Flat pattern is divided into 12 parts and numbered from 1 to 12. In numbering, it is easy to think 12 is the last. No, it's not. Start with number 1 and end with number 1, 2, not number 12. You will see why if you see the finished template in a minute. Next, measure and mark the true distance from the top of the 2-inch pipe to the surface of the 3-inch pipe. Now let's see how to measure and mark it. Using a compass, measure the distance from the top of the 2-inch pipe to 3-inch pipe surface and mark it on number 1 line. You can see that not only number 1 but also number 7, which is exactly opposite, is the same distance. Therefore, mark it on number 7 as well. Next, measure the distance for number 2 and mark it on the development. The same distance as number 2 is 12, 8, and 6. Mark it on flat pattern. Next, measure 3 and mark it. The same distance as number 3 is number 5, number 9, number 11. Mark all the points on the flat pattern, connect these points with a smooth curve, and cut along the line. If you put transparent tape on the coping template, it will last a long time and it will be easy to draw lines. If you write down the size and store it in your toolbox, you don't have to make it every time you need it. Wrap the coping template around 2 inch pipe and draw along the template with a sharpie pen. Next, do a rough cut using a zip cut. I usually leave the line when I do a rough cut. In my experience, a zip cut with a small radius is easier than a brand new zip cut. That's why I don't throw away the laptop of zip cuts and keep them to use later. Then I use a stone disc for fine tuning. In my case, I use the disc edge blade for fine tuning. Lastly, I use the file to deburr. Now, let's put it on a 3 inch pipe top. Judging from the fit, I think the template was made properly. So far, I haven't shown you how to make a coping template. I think there are many people who think that a welder only needs to know how to weld. I don't want to force those people to learn these skills. However, I think that knowing basic layout and fabrication skills in addition to welding will definitely help you advance your career in the future. Now I will explain how to weld this. I think there are two types of welding about coping pipes. First, structural welding. For example, pipes are mostly used as a pressure vessel legs. You need to cope the pipe to fit and weld on the vessel. Another example is a handrail. In this case, what you need is to cope the pipes and weld them together. Second, branch pipe weld. In a pipeline, a branch weld connects a small pipe to a large pipe so that liquid or gas can pass through it. Since liquid or gas must pass through, a hole must be drilled where the branch pipe is connected, and the full penetration weld must be performed. Today, I will introduce branch pipe weld. First, drill a hole in the header pipe that matches 
the branch pipe inside diameter. For large size holes, I use a hole saw. In the case of a stainless steel, purging is done before tack. Second, position the branch pipe and place a very small tack on one side. Lift the other side, give a 3 3 gap and place the tack. Next, cut the first tack and lift up to give a 3 3 gap and tack it up. Get the same gap on both sides and place the tack. Now we are ready to weld the branch pipe. I want to share two key points for branch welding. First, weld position. Second, how to fix the root pass. Let me talk about the weld position first. I haven't seen many people welding the branch on the horizontal position like in the picture. If you are good with this position, you keep up doing it. I always tell people there is no right answer like a math formula in welding. If you can weld well by any means, that is a skill. In my case, I prefer to weld the branch close to a vertical position. I put the weld joint around 45 degrees and weld it. I like this way because I can build up weld fast and good looking. Let's take a look at my root welding. Please don't forget to purge inside the pipe. It is a Schedule 10 pipe, so it might be hard for beginners. If you set the amp too high, you will have a big drop or bumpy deposit. If you set the amp too low, it will bring about the lack of fusion. I set the amp around the 75 and use 332 filler wire. I do kind of a half keyhole welding for the branch root. At the moment when the half keyhole is about to form, I dab the wire and fill the hole. If the keyhole gets bigger so you can't control it, you have to stop and lower the amp. If you can keep going up with making the same size half keyhole, you are doing good. It is a uh, Schedule 10 pipe, so the heat stain is pretty dark as you see. As I said in the previous episode, dark color is no good for stainless steel weld. However, there is an exception that is a Schedule 10 stainless steel root pass. In the case of a stainless steel Schedule 10 pipe root pass, the dark weld color close to the black is a sign of a good root pass. If the color is bright, mostly the root is not penetrated. It is very dark, so you have to brush it when it is hot. You cool down and do the capping. Once again, I like to weld it at a vertical position for the capping too. For comparison, I will do half by a vertical position and the other half by a horizontal position. If you place it in the vertical and weld, you can go up while working the cup on both pipes. So welding is very easy. Also, vertical welding can add more weld deposit than flat or horizontal. So welding is fast and the welding is visible. So the quality is good. Now, let's do the next half by placing it in the horizontal position. If you start from the side at first, it's not too difficult. But as you go down, the weld powder starts to flow downward. And that's when the difficulty starts. This makes you rush even more and I ended up slipping the torch. Okay, let's see how it turned out. The part you see now is welded in vertical position. Since it's a scheduled temp pipe, it gets heated up quickly and the color is a bit dark. However, the welding itself seems to be okay. The welding ends looks like a fish eye, so you can just uh, grind it out. Now let's look at the part welded in horizontal position. I may not have done it well because I'm not good at a welding in this position. However, it seems to have received more heat 
and the welding seems to have overlap and undercut. It looks very simple and nothing special, but the basic rule of welding is as follows. Depending on what you're welding, there are easier welding positions. Welding is not a circus. If you weld in a comfortable position, the quality is good and your body is less tired. Okay, let's take a look at how the root pass turned out. It didn't come out as well as I thought. I guess I was a little bit nervous because I was filming this too. Rather than just having it come out well without any fix, it might be better if you can learn something from it. First, too much penetration. If the weld is bumpy due to too much penetration, just grind it out. As you can see, you can use a flapping wheel or long divert tool depending on the root pass depth. Okay, I fixed it and will show you again. Second, the poor penetration. Assuming poor penetration at the 6 o'clock position, I will show you how to fix it. Usually, the method for fixing pipes is to grind it out outside and weld it again. You can do that for branch pipes too, but I like this method. I just smelt the lack of fusion from the inside pipe. 2 inch pipe inside is too small for the torch to get inside the pipe. In this case, I pull out the tungsten long. The tungsten is too long, so it won't be protected by a torch shield gas. You have to purge the inside pipe with argon gas instead. The hole looks small, but the welding light is so bright that you should be able to see the inside well. You can fuse the part that is not properly welded with a torch. Let's see how it turned out. This method can fix pearl penetration very simply. I will show you what happens if you fix it without supplying Persian gas to protect the tungsten. As you can see, it is not fixed, but it is oxidized and problem gets worse. If it cannot be reached with one tungsten, you can fix it by attaching two tungstens. Today, I show you how to cope pipes, weld branch pipes, and fix them. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.